are some of the cars that inspire me. Each achieves performance in a unique way, with power, lightweight, handling, and aerodynamics. These all embody my love for cars and the pursuit of speed and performance. The first car I designed was designed purely for aesthetics and when I designed it I knew absolutely nothing about what a car should have except for rear brake vents to cool the rear brakes, front brake vents to cool the front brakes, and an engine vent to cool the engine. some problems with the car, namely the roll cage. I had to have a strong roll cage to keep one safe when going very fast, but a passenger couldn't get in without compromising the strength of the roll cage. The floor plan was also a bit of a problem. The passenger barely had space to fit in front of the engine, and the engine was meant to fit between the rear wheels. There was no space for an axle or a transmission. Another problem was that the suspension that I wanted to use would not fit in the space I had without custom building. And I had never built a car and never done any machining, so I really had no clue where to start. This is a diagram of double wishbone suspension, which uses two struts that hold the wheels with a spring in between them to absorb the bumps. That's what I wanted to use in between the tire and the engine. Normal wishbone suspension on a normal car is about 9 inches long, and I only had 6 inches for the entire assembly. I decided when I went to build the thing that there was no point in building such a complicated car for my first car, so I started with the basics. Just a normal car, just very simple, tires, drive chain, and an engine. This is a racing go-kart. Very simple, just has an engine, gas pedal, brake pedal, steering, and wheel. I decided that if I was going to build a car, I wanted to be able to use it in all seasons. The rain would be a problem if you had no roof. So the first thing I started with was a design that was purely for aesthetics. When I went to build it, I realized that there were some problems with the frame. I found that there were also some problems with the suspension and the engine. The suspension from a normal car would not work in the car I was building, and that meant that I had to build my own suspension, and I had never built a car. I decided that that was a little ambitious, so I decided to go to the bare minimum. This was my next design. When I went to 
build just the most simple car I could think of, I realized that once I put in the effort, I wanted it to have a roof so that I could drive it in the rain and the snow. So, this is a car driving in the rain. engine to put in a fast little go-kart was very expensive. The engine has to be big to put out power for the speed. And for my first car, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on an engine in case I messed up. So to save money on my first car, I decided to go for a small engine. This meant the car had to be very lightweight so that the engine would have enough power to push the car around. A small engine means that it can't take much weight. It's much cheaper, but the car has to be light because there isn't enough power to push a heavy car. This led me to microcars. It's a movement of building extremely lightweight cars that use very little energy because there's not much to be pushed around. I found microcars on the internet after I decided to use a small engine. I stumbled across them when I was searching for what other people had built, other designs they had come up with, and solutions for some of the problems I was looking at. Using the streets of Camden, Jory Squibb is enjoying his new convertible. Oh, you get a lot of smiles driving it around. He really enjoys his trips to the gas station. Well, it's got a two-gallon uh, tank, so it'll go almost 200 miles on a fill-up. No, it's not the latest hybrid from Japan. Technically, it's not even a car. It's a micro car called the Moonbeam. It basically uh, is a, a part of a tradition of a very light a uh, very low-powered vehicle for use around town. The 65-year-old handyman created the Moonbeam using parts from old motor scooters and one very useful tool. Just Google whatever your question is. All of a sudden, there's pages of stuff there. You can do a lot of your erranding in a very light vehicle. Uh, you really don't need a couple tons to go to the grocery store or go to the doctor. You know, it really it takes very little to move you around. It has handlebars, drives like a motorcycle, and reaches speeds of 50 plus miles per hour. Jory is an advocate for alternative fuels, but he feels gasoline gets a bad rap. Gasoline is an incredibly concentrated form of energy, which is actually very cheap. We think of it as expensive because we use so much of it. I think they very much have a place in our society, and I'd love it if some manufacturer would spot this thing and come along and say, well, I'm going to make the, I'm going I'm to produce those things. Until that day, he'll keep putting along, showing off his creation and saving gas. So, the path I took to getting to microcars was the first car I designed was very expensive to build, and having no experience, I decided to go for something a little more simple. This very simple car has problems, mainly weather conditions. You don't have a roof, so once I put in the effort, I wanted to be able to use it. I decided to use, make a very small car because I wanted to use a small engine. 